Not doing the business at the moment, Mr Martin O'Neill, are West Ham United. Uh, they have suffered three consecutive away... Uh, I beg your pardon, I'm, I was about to talk about Chelsea there. They lost at home to Chelsea at the weekend and they lost pretty dismally. Um, it was a bad defeat, so much so that the faithful at the end of the match were booing Messrs Lopetegui and the boys on the field of play. Having said that, Lopetegui said, yeah, I understand it. You lost. Uh, all the, they have the right to to complain for sure. We know this. That's why we have to. We are uh, the only solution to change this. We have to to do better. All of us. The first, me, for sure. And uh, we have to change. We have to improve and look forward. But it's true that we is, is the start of the season. We have a lot of time to to do this. Now, right now, we have in three days one other match, one other competition. We have to look forward to be ready. And for sure, to be honest, we ourselves to change things and to, to improve is about this. I suppose there's not much else you can say, man. I was right. It's the third defeat of the season. The, the, the first time in the club's history that the Hammers begun a season by losing three consecutive home matches. Um, there is a problem here, is there not? I, and of course, Lopetegui realises it. But now, <clears throat> there is a theme of, we told you, David Moyes is gone. We told you. Be careful what you wish for. Is that narrative becoming all too evident? Well, the problem is just because you're not winning football matches. But Simon's just pointed out to me some of the teams that they've played so far as Man City, Chelsea, teams like this uh, lost two. So that, that but, Villa as well. And Villa. Yeah. So they would have known. They would have known this at the start of the season when the when the fixtures come out. So this is the time that you obviously, as a, as a manager, as a coach, you look across and you look at the fixtures. You think, and you can't help thinking about the number of points that you might glean in the first, like six or seven games. So those matches were definitely difficult. I have a my, my problem with West Ham is that that they were. I watched the game and they were so easy to play through, so so easy. Now Chelsea have got some talented players that can that, that can cause you problems, but you know they're so easy to play. And I, I, I they're this is unfair to me to say this, but I, from a distance it looked as if you know players losing the ball, taking ages to get back into position again, not picking up people quickly enough, just let, let, letting players run past them so easily, not being able to catch up, all those type of things. Those are the concerning things for a manager at this stage. And again, you make, you make the point. I mean, I, 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 I'm far from an, an apologist for, um, for uh, David Moyes. He doesn't need it, nor am a standard bearer from that sense. But, he, you know, the side... He he had the players. He 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 knew the strengths and weaknesses of the of the side, and he and he tried obviously to play to the strengths and try and hide the weaknesses as much as possible. But it is again, I get back to saying when you asked me a question at the, and very very early on, it's a rush to judgment. I wouldn't be rushing to judgment now in four or five games, particularly with a manager of that caliber. Okay, well there's time yet. Interesting take from Alan Pardew, Simon. He says Moyes. Well, he was a victim of age. Have a listen. David Moyes, you know, obviously he's from my sort of era and my sort of colleague being the sort of dinosaurs that we're meant to be or supposed to be. Uh, we're not looked at as being sexy and David Moyes is, is like that. But unfortunately, um, you can see when you try and replace someone who knows exactly what they're doing, knows exactly what they have in the dressing room and get the best out of the dressing room, they're finding it very, very difficult to emulate even what he did. So Lopetegui was maybe on a hiding to nothing following Moyes. Well, that's interesting. I mean, West Ham got beat Palace this season 2-0 and got spanked by Palace at the end of last season 5-2. Um, they got beat 5-0 by Chelsea at the back end of the season. Uh, it's got nothing to do... David made a choice to play a brand of football at West Ham that didn't appeal to the owners and to the play and to the fans. Now, I'm a big David Moyes fan. I wrote an article about David Moyes at the, at the, in the middle of the season thinking that David Moyes had deserved all the accolades and was on a fully mm. redemptive journey now and should be treated by West Ham a damn sight better than had been treated previously, which was out the door, bring in Pellegrini to pee all the money up against the wall, bring him back in to fix all the problems that Pellegrini had, had brought in place. So he deserved more. <clears throat> but let's get it right. I mean, West Ham have had three games at home against Aston Villa in a European Cup who are punching very hard in this league right now. A Chelsea side that isn't quite the car crash that all the so-called experts forecast they would be. And Man City are the best team in Europe. So I don't, really don't think it's much of a disaster. They've gone away from home, they've beaten Palace 2-0, and they've got a draw against Fulham. So it's not that much of a disaster. So we're talking about the fact that... So West Ham fans shouldn't be booing them? Well, they, well, they can do what they want. 
But what we're doing, what we're doing is we're dissecting whether there's a disaster at West Ham and whether there's a car crash and or whatever else we want to describe it as. They've had three difficult games at home. The manner of the performance yesterday, rather than the result, is the problem. The fact that they were so passive and so easy to play against that Chelsea had a stroll up, they had a cigar on. It could have been anything they wanted it to be, and that's to put that. And that's up to Lopetegui to get his players more aroused. Because I saw West Ham against Palace and I thought they were very good. I thought Kilman was outstanding in that game and they made Palace look really poor in that game because West Ham were so good. Mm. And so with that in mind, I think you've got to take into context the opposition you're playing against. Did, does anyone think that West Ham are going to lay a glove on Man City? Because they didn't last year. They didn't get results against these other teams. They drew it home to Villa. So, it was a, you know, they got, obviously got beat this year, but Villa are an improving side ad infinitum. Hmm. And they've got beaten by Man City. So I mean, what, where's the problem here? So what do, what do West Ham need to show then at Brentford this weekend? Well, they need to show a lot more resilience than they, they than they showed there at the weekend. That's that's for uh, for a start. Simon makes the point about the games, and that those games are very difficult. And I must admit, I I I, I hadn't realised the 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 difficulty of them at the time. But you know what? That's that's forgotten about. You know, some West West Ham season tickets might not even remember about three weeks ago or whatever it is. All you do is look at the at the at the here and now, and that's the problem with the game. You know, the problem with the game. That's something that we know as managers that you're involved in. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. You can say this, you lost that there. To, and that is true. You can lose those games. You can. I think it's the manner in which they succumbed to Chelsea, I think, eventually. You know, they got uh, well and truly spanked in that game. It, it, it is, I think, it's a concern. And I'm sure that the manager, with, as I say, with his pedigree, will get it, will get it sorted out. But there seemed a, a real... It's, again, I, I shouldn't be making this comment from a distance, but it is... From what I see, and and in terms of my experience in the game, it looked as if, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, not a phenomenal desire to get back into position again as quickly as possible when you've lost the ball. That was it. Yeah. And it seemed as if you're chasing things. And then when you are chasing again, a, a, a game, you can be opened up so easily and... It seemed as if Chelsea could have done that at will, particularly after they scored the third goal. And should I mean, from Lopetegui's point of view, Martin, he's not long there. Should that be the worry that my message isn't getting through to them? Oh no, 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 I, no. I, I, I think, uh, yeah, we can make all sorts of judgments from that there from a distance. I thought, listen, he's, 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 he's got, he, he's got a pedigree. And um, and I'm not end up standing up for managers here in, in in this viewpoint. They know the consequences of losing football matches. We all do this, but at the end of it all, again, it's 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 early. And particularly once time I mentioned the games that they've played, I look at it from that viewpoint and think, yeah, we'll be a minute. But there has to be a big improvement in the, in the side and in terms of, for one of a better word, attitude. If that is the case, hmm. that it seemed again. I might be totally wrong about that there, but uh, as I say, looking at it from, from, from that viewpoint. What's going on with West Ham? Uh, they lost by three goals to nil at home at the weekend at the London Stadium under Lopetegui. West, West Ham, that, that the opponents thus far have been tough. What did you expect? So, John, West Ham fan, what did you expect? Good afternoon, John. What, what, what are you thinking? Hello, that's you all right. Good, thank you, John. What's your thoughts on your team? Um... I honestly think it's going to be quite a controversial view. I I honestly think that Lopetegui isn't the right man for us. He's against Chelsea. We look just devoid of any ideas. Um, I'll go as far as to say that even Jared Bowen looks totally out of his depth against them. I mean, given that under David Boyce, we'd beaten Chelsea, what was it, three times over the last Last time, I, I just honestly think that Lopetegui is taking us into a relegation battle, whereas previously we've been in Europe, we've won a European trophy. It's just... Um, mm. I mean, Simon was making the point a moment ago, John, you've got, you've got Brentford and Ipswich. Those are chances for points, are they not? Yeah, absolutely. Um, teams that are of our level or, or we should be beating, but... You know, at the moment, I just can't see it, to be honest. OK, John, listen, thanks for that. Rob's a West Ham fan. Do you see it, Rob? Yeah, hi, guys. Good to speak to you. I haven't spoken to you for a while. But, um, hi, Rob. I believe that in Lopetegui, I, I do believe that he will make us a good side. Uh, but And it's nice to hear Simon give us the excuses of the three games that 
top <laughs> against top teams. But the players have got to show the commitment. I mean, when you watch the game, the first minute of each half, shocking defending. My 11-year-old grandson would have made a tackle. That's what we've got to sort out. We've got to sort out competing against the bigger sides. If we want to be as good as the bigger sides, we've got to show heart and more effort. Mm. But don't blame the manager, because mm. once you're over that line, he's not the one kicking the ball. He's not the one standing there with his finger up his backside, watching the, the winger, Jackson, go through and put the ball into an empty net virtually. It's got to be a lot more effort from the players. If it doesn't work, then yeah, you can start looking at Lopetegui and say, is he getting his message across? At the moment, I do believe in him. I do believe he will turn it around. And let's see after the two games that they've got next. You know, as you rightly say, should be six points, really. Rob, uh, I'm glad you said it's the, it's down to the players in the field. But it's a pity about that the poor old managers getting the heave-ho when the results don't go in that direction and the players still stay on. So... Um, I'm obviously in the managerial corner. Were you? Uh, what did you? What, sorry, what were the expectations this this season of uh, of the new manager coming in? And were you a David Moyes fan? Well, I'm op- always optimistic, and having been a West Ham fan for a long, long, long time, obviously I'm used to disappointment. But I do think we should be aiming for certainly top seven. Uh, I think we're probably going to be more round about 12. And yes, I was a fan of Moyes, but I think it became stale. And again, as you said, we lost 5-0 to Chelsea, although we'd beaten three times. But you can forget all the statistics. When people come on and go, you know, we beat Chelsea 9-0 in 1901. <laughs> it's nothing. As It's got to be current. It's got to be about now. And Lopetegui is the manager. Moyes, thank you. He's done a great job. We've got a trophy under him. Let's get behind Lobotegi. If he fails, at him. Simple as that. Good point. Rob, thank yeah. you for that. Sam, what's your take on it? Another West Ham fan. Many West Ham fans getting in touch with this lunchtime. Go on, Sam. Hi, um, first time caller. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, I'd just like to say that I, uh, yeah, I agree with a couple of the West Ham fans. I think, personally, I think West Ham, we've been living in dreamland for the last few seasons. We're, we're, we're getting more of a bigger club, but I don't think we are there yet. My biggest concern with Lopetegui is, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not panic stations. I was more out towards the end. Um, but my biggest concern is we've signed a defender that was meant to be going to Juventus that can't seem to get a minute when our back four is pretty poor. Um, and a Brazilian international, a young international that can't even seem to get the squad, which we paid a lot of money for. They're, they're my biggest concerns. And the thing with Lopetegui that worries me is I can't see what he's trying to implement. Um, and yeah, they're my, they're my biggest concerns, really. I don't feel like we've changed a lot. Fair enough, fair enough, Sam. We'll let Craig finish it off. Craig, um, what is it early days yet? Are you, are you in any state of um, perplexity? Hi, guys. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I, was at, I was at the game on Saturday, and I just think football's such fine lines in terms of results and performances. Yeah. Um, if we'd have won one of those three games at home against Villa, City or Chelsea, um, then we'd be looking at it in a completely different view. Um, we, had a, we had a decent result at Palace. We got a point at Fulham. Last season, we went to Palace, lost 5-2. Um, and we lost 5-0 at Fulham. Um, and even in terms of the performance, Saturday, we got picked off. We got picked off. All three goals were very similar. They were the ball inside, the right back, and our right centre back, Mavropanos, who was pushing up, he was pushing up and he got caught out of position and it was a ball over the top. And the three goals were all so similar. In terms of possession, we had 52%. We had seven shots on target, they had five. They scored three goals, we didn't, we wasn't clinical. Mm. Um, and that's, that's what I'm talking about in terms of fine line. Um, I believe in Lopetegui, he's got great experience. Um, in his time, you can't judge him. How can you judge a manager after five games? We've got a set of players who have been drilled in to um, set up in the Moyes way. Now, Lopetegui is obviously trying to appease the fans because everyone is expecting him to come in and play a com- completely different style. Um, but he's got to implement those ideas to the players. Yeah. Know, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen overnight. We've got nine new players come into the squad as well, which he's trying to, you know, he's trying to bring them into the team. Um, so new manager, new setup. 
new players. It's going to take time. OK, Craig, so, there's your namesake as a Brentford fan. Good afternoon, guys. Brentford will beat West Ham on Saturday. Thanks, Craig. Um, what about Chelsea, Simon? Where are we going with Chelsea then? I mean, at the moment, yeah, it is big. It, the future looks bright, for sure. Well, they're, they're, they're getting themselves together bit by bit, inch by inch, yard by yard. There was never any doubt in my mind that they would. I mean, obviously, we, we play out these things because of the amount of money that they've spent and the so-called off-the-field activities of the two owners that are sitting next to one another in the in the, ball, in the um, director's box on Saturday. And all these things play out. And obviously, we see Pochettino getting removed. He has had a decent start. They've, they've battered Wolves. They've, they've outplayed West Ham. They've gotten three wins. They're fifth in the league. A lot of people would have scripted this differently. We'll see. We'll see how the season progresses for them. Mm. But he's got his head now, hasn't he? He's got his, you know, obviously in the first game of the season, they had Man City. There was a difference. There was a golf. Um, and, and that golf, I thought, was a lot to do with the fact that they didn't have someone to put the ball in the back of the net. I'm still the jury for me. I don't know what Martin thinks is out on Jackson. I think he, he's OK, but I don't think he's the kind of goal scorer that Chelsea need. And the fact he scored a few goals this season is good and maybe his confidence will build and maybe he'll become more of a goal scorer. But I think they, they're built around Cole Palmer. I think he's the he's the he's the the hundreds of thousands sprinkled on the top of this litany of stars that they've got. Mm. Jaden Sancho's gone in there, got a point to prove, got a lot to prove because he's been a disappointment at Manchester United. So I, I think Chelsea will be all right this season. I, I I tip them to to do well this season, and I don't think I've got any reason to change my mind on it. Of course, all right, top top four, top four, top four. Martin O'Neill. Big ask. Well, the way they're, the way they're going at this minute, you wouldn't disagree with that. I, I were they with, good or were I, West Ham ranked though? I don't, well, I thought Chelsea were were good as well too. I, 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 like everything else, you can look at it from uh, two different angles, and uh, I thought it was made easier for them. But you still have to you still have to convert. You still have to make the little passes, and you still have to create space for yourself to do all of those particular things. And they did it. They did it very very easily and and nicely as well too. Also, I, I, all the points that Simon has just made, I couldn't disagree with him. I think that I, uh, Maresca has had a job. He's a, a tough old job there because he's had a lot of players. He's had to he's had to bin a couple that uh, that in maybe in normal circumstances he might not want to have done. However, at this minute, it's been going f- fine, and uh, long may it continue for them because you know they. they Obviously, their record over the last 20-odd years has, has been fantastic. Sure, Considering so Chelsea well. buzzing along quite well. West Ham need to go to Brentford and start showing that they can do something. Mm. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.